Hi, this is Bill. I want to give you a little rundown and some hints on how to prepare the final case, which will be Gemini Electronics. After I spent some time looking at Diamond Foods, I ran across this case, and I have decided to use it in my two classes that I'm teaching on ground, and decided that I would also offer it to you. I think it's a better capstone case for what we've been trying to do this semester. However, you're going to have to uh, think back to Troy and, and refresh your memory on uh, things like uh, the ratios, financial ratios, because a lot of that will have, uh, a lot of this ca uh, case will have to do with financial ratios and understanding the financial statements. So the name of the case is uh, Gemini Electronics, and you're going to be playing the part in this, writing a memo as Sarah McIvor to her boss, Dr. Frank Wing. Uh, giving an independent evaluation of Gemini's financial condition. And we'll go over all the uh, exhibits here in just a minute. But you can find that case by going to your classroom and under course materials, it'll be the first item that'll come up, Gemini Electronics. This is where the case is found. And then the Gemini Electronics analysis, uh, what I've done is uh, I've prepared all the ratios and analysis exhibits that you're going to need uh, for this case. Uh, the case actually asks you to do all the ratios, calculate them, and to do some of the other uh, financial statement uh, manipulation. But because uh, we're getting kind of a, a little late start and some of this is old material, I've provided that for you. And so there's another uh, uh, file here called Gemini Electronics Analysis. So let's take a, uh, well before I go on, your write-up should include, just in, in memo format, um, an introduction, why you're doing this, who asked you to do it, what it's all about, and then the body of the paper, which we'll talk about in the rubric, and then a conclusion. You should make recommendations or conclusions uh, as, uh, as the analyst to your boss. Um, so let's take a look at the uh, financial statements and how they've been set up here for you. So you'll open up this Excel file, and you'll see that it actually has um, one, two, three, four, five tabs. The first one is the raw financial statement. And if you take a look at this, what you'll notice right off the bat is that the numbers are very big. I mean, when we're talking about sales in 2009, you've got $13,664,714,160. Well, when numbers get this big, it's really not important to analysts to really include the full detail of the number. So what I've done on this tab that's called 000, 000 is I've reduced these numbers to uh, eliminate or omit the millions off of it. So the sales number here that we saw just a moment ago is still 13,664,000 uh, or million, I should say. So it's 13,664.7 million. And this is how we should refer to these numbers in the case. Um, this number would be the cash number here, 1,413.5 million. And putting the numbers in this format will make it easier to analyze and easier to discuss in your paper. So that's the, uh, object, or that's the idea behind having this... Uh, zeros omitted uh, financial statement here. The next thing I've done is taken that same financial statement and developed trends. So when you see these uh, change columns, what that is is the year-over-year -year change for each one of these numbers. So for instance, sales between 2008 and 2009 increased 12.2 percent. That's what this is saying right here. And then what it also allows you to do is see trends over time. Sales went up 152%, then 60%, and then 40, and then 12. So as you're doing an, uh, an analysis here, an observation you can make is that sales are increasing, but at a decreasing rate. And that starts with the income statement and then also goes down to the balance sheet as well, uh, both showing the year-over-year -year differences in all of the balances. So you should be able to make some observations and do some analysis based on this trend financial statement. The next thing I've done is taken the uh, 
financial statements and put them into what we call common size. So for the income statement, everything is as a percentage of sales. So sales are 100%, and here we can see that in 2005, our gross profit was 38.21% of sales. And then you can see the trend over time. And then the final column here shows that the industry average gross profit is 38%. So you can see a trend here, and you can also compare the trend or the most recent uh, numbers to the industry uh, averages. So again, we have common size statements for both the income statement and uh, all of the balances are based off of a percentage of sales. When we look at the balance sheet, it's set up a little bit different. Everything is set up uh, off of a uh, percentage of total assets. So in this case, we see that uh, cash for 2009 was 14.19% of total assets and compares to an industry standard of 4.54%, cash being 4.54% of uh, total assets for the industry. So the observation here is that for whatever reason, and it's partly your job to try to determine why, uh, Gemini, or Gemini Electronics carries a lot more cash on their balance sheet as a percentage of assets than the industry average. Um, and that's really what we want to do here is, is make observations and then uh, with the uh, knowledge that we have and the information in the case, not just say that things went up or down or things are better than or worse than. That's what we call an elevator speech. This went down, up, that went down. That's fine to start with, but then you want to try to describe or explain why that happened. And in some cases, there'll be hints in the case as to why that happened. In other cases, you may have to hypothesize. Like, uh, for instance, land, uh, plant, and equipment have gone up steadily, and that may be indicating that the company's trying to set themselves up for growth. Adding assets would be an indication of trying to grow. So it's all right to hypothesize, but the hypotheses have to make sense as well. And then the final page that we have here, well, actually the second to last page, are the ratios that may be of help to you as you're analyzing this company. Now, keep in mind that not all ratios are as important as one another. One is not just, they don't all have the same importance. So you'll have to go through and identify which you think are important based on what you've learned about the company from the uh, review of the financial statements and from the review of the case. So what I've done here is identified the ratio, given you a formula. This one is current assets over current liabilities. So you'll have to try to decode those formulas. And then we have the actual value for the five years and then the industry average. And then what I've done is I've gone to investopedia.com um, and selected some comments that they make about each one of these ratios that may help you as you're doing your analysis. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out are the turnover ratios are based on average uh, accounts receivable, inventory, and payables. Uh, some authors or some books you'll see will do it on the period ending uh, balance as opposed to the average balance. We're going to use average balances here. And then on the turnover ratios, we're also showing both the actual ratio uh, for instance, the AR ratio here of 10.6, um, it means that accounts receivable turn 10.6 times or 30 every 36 days. And in this case, we can make the statement that it took an average 36 days to collect receivables. The um, only other uh, thing that I want to point out on the ratio page is on the, um, if I can find it, it's a leverage ratio. Here we go. This is the long-term debt to equity. Debt to equity. Sometimes this will be calculated using all liabilities. I prefer to use it only that interest-bearing debt on a balance sheet. So that's how these have been calculated. Where you see an NA means that the industry benchmark was not available. So here's your ratios. Uh, you may need to know that the tax rate is 35%. So I've included that information for you as well. So the ratios for each one of the five years that we're studying, and then the industry average. 
Now keep in mind as you're looking at these ratios and, and you have to look at them as trends because certainly it's not as important that the current ratio is 2.22 in 2005. It's more important that it's 2.56 in 2009 and then compare it to the current industry average. What the five years history will do will be able to allow you to identify trends and as to whether things are getting better, worse, or staying the same. Um, I'm still developing the, the rubric, and um, as soon as I have that finished, I'll post it for you. But it's going to have four sections. The first one is cogency, meaning is your analysis relevant, is it persuasive, and is it convincing? The second one is content. Have you included everything? Have you talked about the ratios that you should talk about? Have you identified trends that need to be discussed? And then is it correct? Is your analysis correct? Does your analysis follow what the numbers are telling us? And then the, following, uh, the, the final rubric uh, is presentation. Now assume that the Excel spreadsheets have been attached to your paper. You don't have to do that. I've already got them. Everybody has the same. Just make the assumption that they've been attached to your paper. But there may be a chance where you're going to want to copy a section of one of the financial statements to make a point within the body of your paper without having to refer the reader to the exhibits or the attached spreads. So again, remember, this is an analysis. Um, I'd say you should be able to get this done, you know, in, in less than, in, in around five pages or so, and maybe less than that, and maybe a little bit more. But it's not going to be a, a, a very, very lengthy paper. This is, again, not an elevator paper, not this one up, that one down. That's okay to start with, but you have to explain why. And then it's all right to hypothesize, and you should come up in your final paragraph with some kind of conclusion or recommendations. Give me a call or send me an email if you have any other uh, questions, and uh, I hope you find this assignment to be worthwhile. Again, thanks for your cooperation in uh, accepting this change, and good luck.